So I'm going to start with you, Claudia, because you are from Detroit. And, you know, what's it like joining this particular show as crazy money? Um, but that you're a hometown hero, like you're getting to be involved in a show that is based in your home, Frank. Yes, it was also very good to see you too, Jill, on Saturday. You look good too, girl, okay? Um, I think that being a part of this show is just so aligned by God. I think because of my struggle with being my, my authentic self, especially coming into this industry, I was able to fully be my complete self in the audition room, on set, as I'm, you know, as we're promoting this show. So I think that I'm not only representing myself and God, but I'm representing my city. Like people are seeing themselves. When we did a, a premiere in Detroit, actually last week for 313 Day, which is our like our city's holiday, everyone was so just happy to be able to be like, I see her, like I know her. That's my aunt, that's my God mom, that's my cousin. And not just in my character, but for everyone else. So it's really just um, so divine that we are all working co cohesively to bring Detroit into a broader brighter light. Absolutely. I love that. So I love this friend group for Diaria. So talk to me a little bit, Dominique, I'll go to you, about Aja and her goals and how she connects to the friends and the group. Well, at first it was hard for Aja to connect to certain friends, <laughs> Moni. But you know, she she loves <laughs> She loves tea. She's a she's a great and and no they, they never mind. I can't give the story away. But um, she is a great person. She's a great character. I think that she's a really good friend to Diara. Um, the mystery within itself, she was a little bit against, but I, I love the fact of the layers that she comes with and how colorful she is and how she loves Detroit. She is Detroit's finest, and um, she loves it. She she loves her friend. So she's always going to be there for her friend, even though in spite of she really doesn't want to in this situation. Amazing. She just wants her to move on. Right. I feel that we all have that friend where we got to walk him through it. Brian, I love the relationship as well. I love that he keeps her balanced, but also brings her out a little bit and pulls that side of her out. And we get to see that in some of the episodes. So can you talk to me a little bit about Mr. T and his relationship with Diara, as well as the whole friend circle. It's kind of crazy because I've actually known the real Diara since 2007. So a lot of the dynamic of our relationship on screen, that chemistry, that bond is real. So y'all are watching something that's rooted in a lot of truth and a lot of reality. Um, but on the show, I feel like he's that, you know, he's that good old husband. Everybody got that good old work, you know, gay work husband. Um, it's like, I got your back. But at the same time, I'm going to make sure you have a good time. I'm going to show you that there are freedoms that are outside of the box that you got to, you know, put yourself in. However, I don't know if you should go chasing after somebody you've been on one date with. <laughs> yeah. It's only been one date, baby. It's only been one date. Um, but what I like about T is that he's a truth teller. Um, DR and I actually say this in real life, that the truth without compassion is violence. So I think what's beautiful about T's relationship with DR is that I'm going to tell you the truth. But I'm going to tell you the truth in love. He's never like being violent towards her with his truth. He's just saying, I'm trying to keep you from going off the rails. That's all it is. And so what I love about T is that he's always going to spill it. He always going to spill the tea. Okay. But it's always going to be in a way that a real friend tells you the truth. And, and I love that we get a chance to see the nuances and the authenticity and the groundedness of this character. I've been saying it in almost every interview, but I think it's so important as queer Black people on television not to play these stereotypes. We're done with the stereotypes. And what's beautiful about Mr. T is he's a real grounded dude who also happens to like dudes. And I think that we're, we're going to get a chance to see something on television that we don't often get a chance to see within Black culture. Um, we're, and, it's, and that's not just for Mr. T. That's in every single character. I mean, the, the muscle and the person who's the most rah-rah in this group is the person that's married with two kids. Here so you. every single character, we're throwing the stereotypes out the window. And Mr. T is such a great example of that. Absolutely. So one thing I loved is the genre, the area that this show is playing in. Um, so the mystery aspect, but still has some funny to it. 
So for you, I know we as Black people, we're curious, but there's only a certain point that sometimes we'll go to. What is the tipping point for you that would make you pull a string in a situation, a situation like this or in any situation? And Claudia, I'll start with you. I think that's so funny. I feel like if we get to a place where both of our lives are in danger or we go to jail, I just feel like it ain't nothing, ain't no dude or woman or person we're going to jail over for real, for real, unless they locked in. So if we're close to being arrested, we we cut it off. God God said no. God didn't ordain it. <laughs> or, or, or fighting over. That for me, just anything, anything that's going to take me out of my comfort zone of just, I'm like, yeah. I show no. character. I show character. Yeah. I, I show character. Exactly. Exactly. That's the word. I show character. It's like, it's just a no. Yeah. It, it, that's not what God have for you. That's not in the journey. Amen. Yeah. I, I just feel like, I just feel like we ain't children. We grown. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I'm that friend that I'm your grown friend. That's going to say, look, it was fun, but now, <laughs> now you moving out of alignment of who you are. And is this even leading to what you say you want? I got a lot of real friends in real life. Let's, can we get real? Can we get real? Yeah. For Let's get real. It's a lot of friends in real life that are pursuing relationships that are not in any way reflective of what you say you want. Mm -hmm. I'm the friend that's going to say, it doesn't matter what the other person is doing. What do you say you want? Is this, is this in alignment with what you said you wanted? If it's not in alignment with what you say you want in your life, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. I'm that friend. It's sometimes that inner child to kind of one that one to be uh, accepted or whatever. And we just can't stand the rejection. So we're constantly chasing what's rejecting us. It's a thing. And that's why you got to meet. That's why we got to meet. Yeah. Because I'm going to come in and, and remind you how great you are. And mm -hmm. I'm going to come in and remind you what you really deserve. I'm that friend. And everybody needs that friend for sure. Yes. So along those lines, one of the other things that I loved is although we're dealing with the mystery throughout this, there is the very real situation of distractions and, you know, goals not achieved and sort of, you know, some of the things that we walk through on the other side. And I love that. And you touched on some of those things. Um, what is it about the outside stories that you guys sort of loved in filling out this series and these characters? Oh, thank ladies. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm like, that's a really great question. Because yeah, I'm over here like, wait. I can tell you what I think real quick. Um, for me, I think what's beautiful is the mystery is one plot line, right? So we all love the Perry Masons, the murder she wrote. We love the how to get away with murders, right? But we also love those shows. You're talking about the outside storylines. We love those shows like Insecure in Atlanta that's actually about the relationships of the people. And so to me, to put the combination of of a friendship story within a mystery, I've just never seen that on television. It's usually one or the other. It's usually I'm following the mundane domestic lives and relationships of these people, or I'm watching a mystery. This is the first time in a long time where I feel like I'm a part of something and, and I'm enjoying watching both in the mm -hmm. same show. It's kind of like, I want to hang out with them. Like when I'm watching the episodes, I'm like, oh, I like them. I want to watch them all the time. Just hang out. Let's just, I want to see them at brunch. I want to see who they date. I want to see when they, they disagree with each other. And then I'm like, oh my God, I got to remember that like somebody's missing. <laughs> they, they looking for somebody. So to have the combination of both of those styles of shows in the same show is a gift. It's a gift. Yeah, each, each outside story to me with a Mr. T or a Moni or, or a Danger is like, we all know these characters. So it's like, yeah, we have the mystery, but I think DR did a great job of mixing our real lives in with this mystery as well. It's just very relatable. It's something that I think anybody could get into with each character on their outside story of a post on, on a side of the whole mystery. You can actually relate to a lot of these characters outside stories as well. I think it's a reflection of life too. Like when we have things going on, like if there's a, a, a problem or a central thing that we're trying to figure out, like, let's just say with our purpose, we still have those, you know, bookstores of people and experiences and, and goals and distractions that all kind of coexist in that too, in that broad journey. So I think it's a real reflection of life and what do art do? Imitate life. 
Period. Absolutely. Okay. And so my last question, of course, I have to ask you guys, because the central theme where we start off at is ghosting. Are you pro ghosting or against it? Why or why not? <laughs> I think that you should be against it. One of our castmates, Shannon, actually was at something similar to that. And he said that he doesn't believe after one date, you're kind of owed anybody any explanation. If it didn't work out, it didn't work out. I just think it's just like having some type of empathy or something, just saying, you know, it's not going to work out for this reason and then let's move on. But I'm not pro ghost. I think that that's wrong. I just think that it's not right at all. There should be some type of like, you know, just kind of let me know if it ain't working, but don't just leave. It's just not cool. I'm a cancer, so maybe that's why. <laughs> no, I, I just think communication is important. Exactly. Yeah. Communication is important. So, you know, if it, if it's, I agree with you. I, I don't, I'm not a big, I'm not big on the ghosting thing. I think if you communicate that this might not be what you want it to be, and you could just let it be that, then I think, I think that's respectful. Yeah. I have ghosted but it's not right. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm very for the communication, but honestly, I'm pro God. Like honestly, and a part of God, we gonna show love. And a part of that love is proper communication and respect for one another. And we don't wanna waste people's time. So as much as we feel like we're the prize, they're the prize to somebody else as well. Exactly. So if we just say, hey, I don't think this is ordained. I don't think this is gonna work. God didn't want this for me, but listen, I wish you the best. I, I wish you the best. Look, we all in unison with that, amen. <laughs> And the church says amen in completion.